Creating a complex parting line? Welcome to another episode. Most of the molds that I make have a planar parting line. In other words, you can take a piece of uh, metal, a piece of flat, flat metal, and then just cut the cord and cavity, and you're good to go. But I have one part that I'm working on right now that has a more complex shape, and so a simple flat mold is not going to work to make the part. What I'm going to do in this episode is show you how I go about creating the core and the cavity by dividing a block into the two halves using a complex parting line. Let's head to the computer and I'll show you how I get started. My goal is to make an injection mold for this part. And so as you can see, the parting line for this is going to have to be non-planar. It's going to be a lot more complicated. So what I'm going to do is start a new part rather than creating the mold directly in here. I'll create a new design and then the first thing I have to do is save it. So I'll call this TCS because that's who this is for, Pocket Mold 2. And the reason I'm doing two is because I already have one that I've been working on. So I'm just going to take you through the process. So the first thing I want to do is insert derived. And then I will take this right here, select this, and now I have the same model inside my mold project, but it's not the original model. And so that way I won't modify, you know, change the original model by having the injection mold in it directly. So the first thing I'm going to do is decide where I want the parting lines to be and then use patching to, or I should say surfaces, to fill in those sections that I want to become the parting line. So for the holes, I'm going to use the top, like so. And then I'll just select all of the holes. Now the next thing I want to do is use this as a parting line. So I want to create a surface between here and here. And again, I have the choice of either the top or the bottom. For this case, I'm going to use the bottom because the way I have the draft right now, it's facing this way, so I need to use the bottom as the parting line. I'm going to use the loft tool for this, and the trick for the lofting tool is you want to select segments like this that are all connected, and there's a little bit of a gotcha in this particular design because if we look right here, you can see there's a really short segment that I need to select as well. If I don't select that and I end up selecting this one here, I would end up with a second profile, which is not what I want, uh, because it'll start a second profile as soon as it's uh, not contiguous. So if I click here, you can see it starts a second profile. And then again, I want to select the segments in the same order. And then here we have to f select that really tiny line, and then we can go back and select the rest. And now I've got a patch that is going to cross between the two halves. That loft left a section here that's open, so I'm going to go ahead and loft to close that section. So I'll go here and there, and you can see it's closed that section. So I've taken care of most of it. Now what I want to do is extend the plane or the surface all the way around. So I'm going to start by creating a construction plane. And I'm just going to offset it by six inches. Uh, speaking of which, I'm going to switch to inches because that's what I'm used to working in. Okay, and then I'll add a sketch here, which will be projecting basically this line here, and again we have to make sure we get the whole thing, so there's that tiny segment there. And 
And then we need uh, a line across here. So if I got that correctly, I should be able to loft from here. Again, I have to make sure that there are no tiny segments. And I'll find out if there's a tiny segment if I see another profile appearing. So here's a tiny segment. Okay, I'm not sure this is going to work because I got a message, but we'll find out. Oh, I see. Yeah, so this is where I ended up getting multiple profiles. So I want to delete the extra profiles. And uh, what I'll do then is I'll go ahead and do this in more than one section rather than try to do it all at once. So I've got the first part selected and now I'll go ahead and select the second part. And then make sure I have this tiny segment as well. Ah, this is the issue here. That's why it didn't work. So that means I need to go back to the sketch and I need to add that missing segment like so. So while I'm at this, I'll check the other side and make sure that there isn't a segment over here that I'm missing. Okay, so I'm good there. Um, and by the way, I'm using a space mouse, which allows me to move uh, quite quickly with one hand. So let's try that lofting again. And I might actually be able to loft the whole thing, so I'm going to uh, be greedy. Nope, that didn't work. So I'm going to delete that profile, and then I'll start selecting over here. And again, I need to select this tiny segment there. Okay, so that gives me one patch. Then I'll go ahead and show the sketch again. And let's do a patch. We can just do extrude for this one. No, that didn't work. So I'll just go ahead and do a loft again. From there to there. Oh, I see. I need to actually select that from the previous one. So let me go back to the previous loft and go here and then add to it. Okay, that's better. Okay, loft again. From here to there, straightforward. And then loft again to get this last segment. Okay. There we go. So I have that profile. The next thing I need is uh, basically a flat plane. So I can go ahead and create a sketch on the bottom here where I project what I have. I'll go ahead and hide these sketches. And for these, I'm rather than uh, I just care about the sides, and you'll see why in just a second. That's interesting. It didn't keep my projections. Oh, there we go. I turned off the wrong sketch. Okay. So now what we want to do is basically create the, the rectangle. And this is going to be larger than the, the mold. So what I'm going to do is I'll set these two to be equal so that it's centered. 
And then I'll set this to 12 inches by 12 inches, which is going to be larger than the mold. And then I can make that a patch. Okay, so now I've got the complete parting line. Um, the next thing I want to do is combine all of these because you can see how they are different colors. So I want to combine, which is done with stitching. So I'm going to select the different surfaces that I want to stitch together. And then we have this final one down here. And then when we stitch, that'll give us a single surface. And now we can use this uh, surface to act as the parting line. The next step is to go ahead and create the, the mold. So I'll say new component and I'll say mold. Uh, and then I'll draw a sketch. And I want this part to be pretty much in the center of the mold. So I'm going to draw, create a uh, construction that will allow me to get close to the center. So what I'm going to do is use this point here and then mm, this point here. I'm going to actually grab a couple more points. So I'm going to grab this point as well as this point. And then I'm going to draw two construction lines from there and there to there. And where those two intersect is going to be the center line this way, but not the other way. So now I'm going to draw a line here. I'm not going to make this, I'm, I'm not going to worry about making this exactly centered at the moment. I can do that later. But what I want to do at this point is create a center rectangle and turn off construction. And I'm going to make this uh, six inches by six inches for now. I can figure out how large I want the mold to be later. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this. And I'm going to do two directions. So this side needs to be probably, again, I'll have to figure this out, the exact dimensions, but I'll use three, and then for the other one, I'll use one inch. Um, okay. Now comes the fun part. What we want to do is to combine the parts to basically subtract the, the original body, which is here. Sorry, that's the, I want to select this as the target body, and then this is the tool body. And I said join, but what I really wanted to do is to cut. So if we do a inspect with a cross section, you can see that we have cut out the part itself. Now we want to split this into two halves. And we're going to split it by using boundary fill. So for boundary fill, we need to select the tools, which are all of these right here. And then also we need to select this right here. And when we do that, you can see it gives us these checkboxes. I'm going to start with the top checkbox, which is going to give us the, the top part. And I needed to click on this first, so I'll check this checkbox and I'll say new body and that will give us the top. So if we look here, you can see if we hide the original body, we have the cavity. Now if I show the original body again, we want to perform that same operation a second time. So we'll say boundary fill. We'll select all of these as well as the body and then we're going to select the bottom cell say okay and now we have the cavity so at this point we can hide these and you can see we have half the mold there which is pretty cool 
and then we have the other mold half here. And now I can go ahead and continue uh, figuring out how to design the various parts of the mold. So that's how you can create a core and a cavity with a complex parting line. I'm going to continue with this project in the future after I do some more work on the, the mold. My goal is to be able to make this part on my Morgan. And so I need to do a little bit of more work to create the, the sprue, the you know, and the runner, the gates, the ejector pins, etc. before I'm ready to actually make the mold. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found something useful in it. Please give me a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe. And if you click on the, the bell that's down below, this will notify you when I have another video so you don't miss any of my videos. See you next time.